Greetings, hello. Can anybody hear me through this? God, this is this is what we've come to, people. To be in the outdoors, we have to do this. I feel like this is making it harder for me to breathe. Uh, and I'm breathing out of my mouth. Uh, and I can just smell my own breath. Uh, far, I like way too close, by the way, way too close. Uh, but welcome to another road reflection. <laughs> uh, I'm not gonna keep this on. Uh, I just, I just wanted to show. Like, I am taking the initiative. I'm doing my part, uh, even though I think a lot of this stuff is is super silly. Ugh. I'm gonna take this thing off, guys. It's fucking crazy. It's choking me out a little bit. Sorry if it fucks with the audio, but I'm getting choked out. A little bit there. Okay. All right. Here we go. Clean the glasses up a little bit. How are you guys? You guys doing good? You guys doing good on a Saturday? Uh, we're here. We're, we're on a Saturday. We're storytelling Saturday, you guys. Back in the car. We're going to go for a little drive. This is what I like to do, by the way, is every so often um, to kind of make myself less stir crazy, uh, I do jump in here and listen to music and uh and jam out uh you know and and uh drive around for a little while it's fun it keeps me calm it keeps me it keeps keeps me kind of centered i used to do that shit all the time in high school uh which is actually what today's story is going to be somewhat revolving around high school and college uh it's going to be a little bit of a journey. Uh, I hope you guys are, are cool with that. <laughs> I'm, I'm sure you are. But, um, hey, do me a favor. If you haven't watched any of the videos from this week, um, they're, I, I think they're pretty important. I'm, I, I talk a lot about strikes and the history of general strikes um, uh, that, that, we've, that we've seen throughout history. Um, so, so please check those out. I think they're important. Um, I think that we're headed in that direction and, uh, you know, we're, we're not really going to get too much into anything political, but it is me. So I'm pretty sure something will wind up getting into the genre of, you know, sociology and philosophy and fucking all that, all that esoteric stuff that, uh, <laughs> that I like to talk about all the time, you know, um, but, um, yeah, I, pl please check those videos out. Please share those videos. I think they're pretty important. Um, I think we're headed down, um, you know, this important path. And that's one of the things that I'm going to uh, try to do today on this drive is tell the story, which we're going to get to in just a minute. Um, and then I'm, my, my plan is to try to head down to, to the Whole Foods around, uh, around my parents' place here that, where I'm at. And uh, and check out and, and see if there there are any strikers out there, um, and you know stand with them in solidarity for a bit, and um, maybe try to get their story if they're open to talk about it. Uh, if not, I'm not going to force anybody to do that. But that is something that I wanted to do. I wanted to see if if, if we're seeing some of that uh, that whole food strike uh, in in my neck of the woods. If if they're happening in your neck of the woods. Um, let let a vigilante know. By the way, putting that on just made me feel like I'm, you know, part of just some kind of like fucking underground superhero starter kit. Essentially, <laughs> they got a hat on. You know, if I put the hood on, I turn. I, I you know, it, it would turn into like some sort of fucking night raid vigilante or some shit. Uh, so uh, that was that was mildly exciting for me. <laughs> Uh, but, uh, yeah, I, I, if, if you do have strikes going on in your neck of the woods, uh, let me know. I'm, I'm super, I would, would love to, to check it out, to, to kind of let the people know, because here's, here's the real deal. Um, nobody in corporate media is going to fucking talk about it. Guaranteed. Guaranteed. Fucking Cuomo from his quarantine house isn't going to talk about it. Blitzer's not going to talk about it. Rachel Maddow sure, ain't, sure shit ain't going to talk about it. 
because she's become a corporate shill. I mean, she's probably been a corporate shill for a long time, but she really, she, she really just fucking dug her heels into it. I doubt Car- Tucker Carlson's going to talk about it. Like, none of these networks are going to talk about it. So it's up to us, people on the ground floor, independent journalists, um, comedians. Comedians are talking about the strikes. <laughs> Oh, the world we live in. Oh, the world we live in. Um, But I wanted to get back into my car. uh, And I think on Saturdays, just to kind of shake it up, just to kind of change things up, uh, I might get back into my car, uh, pending that gas stations will still be open um, for the foreseeable future. Who knows? They might not be. We might have to shut down uh, gas stations. Uh, we might, we might, uh, you know, that, that might be something that we have to go into, into, into battle for. Who knows? You, you know, I'm hoping that that doesn't come down to that. It doesn't come down to the, to any sort of r- real l- l- lunacy of any kind. Um, but, uh, I might jump into my car on Saturdays and, uh, and do, and do the old classic. The classic version of Road Reflections, uh, with, uh, with me in a vehicle talking to you guys uh about some shit so uh yeah let's get in let's get into the story you guys let's get into the story so i wanted to tell you guys the story of my very first car uh seeing that i'm in a car all the time um this is sort of the life and death of the very first car that i had and uh it was a, a real piece of shit, you guys. <laughs> like my first car. That, look, I'm not trying. I'm not trying to be unappreciative. I, it, this, that's just the reality of what that car was. Um, it was. It was a, a 1996 Ford Taurus, and it was a real piece of shit. But it got my mom her license. It got my sister her license, and it got me my license. Uh, so we had that car for a while for a fucking while uh and you know uh I feel like I'm the only person in my family that had um a real connection with the car my sister's not big on driving she wasn't particularly a big fan of it but she would always sit in the car when I had my learner's permit and we would go see movies and stuff like so she would sit in the car she had a license I had my permit so so we would drive and go go see movies so as much of a piece of shit as that car was uh, it, it did ha- like it did hold a sentimental place in my heart, right? I, I, I basically was driving that car since I was in high school, all through and pretty much all through college. Like I, um, and it was kind of a battle for me to get this car. Um, you know, uh, this this tan nineteen ninety six Ford Taurus that always seemed to like have some kind of like every time we took it in to the mechanics they were just like why is this car still running (laughs) who told you you should god damn it fine we'll fix it fine whatever fucking like fine right (laughs) then they and then they would fix it uh so so it was a real challenge though because when i did get my license uh, my dad didn't want me to to like have anything to do with this car, and we got into a big blowout about it. Um, and eventually, he did. He he caved, and uh, you know, like like my mom said some shit to him. Like it it, be, it like it became a fucking thing, guys. Because when my sister got her license, she was like, "I have no interest in driving this car. I literally got this license." Uh, so that I have like proper identification and can like go to bars and shit, right? Like that. <laughs> like that's where her priorities were. Uh, my priorities were: I want independence. I want to, you know. I'm. Uh, I, I didn't realize this uh, at the time. I was 18 when I got my license. A uh, bit of a late bloomer, um, but uh, I was basically like, uh, uh, you know, prepping myself to become a road comic, and I didn't know it yet. That's really what it was. But um, my mom kind of fought him on it. I kind of fought him on it. Every, I mean, everybody fought my dad on it. Uh, I, I, I feel like if you know me well enough, you know that I don't particularly have a great relationship with my dad. Um, and, and, you, and, and you can kind of see why. Um, 
but yeah, so he, so eventually, you know, I got added to the, to the car and eventually when I got to college, like I kind of bought the car off of him. Uh, I paid him 500 bucks and, and, and bought the car off of him so that like I could drive the car essentially like, like full time, no questions asked kind of, kind of a thing. And, uh, you know, when I went to college, um, it, it was a, it was an issue, like, my freshman year, I really didn't have that car, I, I didn't even have my license my freshman year of college, I got my license this summer, uh, because I was 17 when I got into college, and then I turned 18 my first, my freshman year, I was, like, the youngest person, in co- I'm not, it's not a brag, it's, it's always kind of been a thing, like, I'm always the youngest person in every class that I attend, um, but it was, like, so inconvenient, because I couldn't do anything, uh, which is probably why, like, I'm, not going completely insane in this quarantine is because when I was in college, like I, I was just stuck on campus for the first year and a half that I was, <laughs> that I was on, uh, that I was in college that I like had to like figure out how to do shit on my own. Um, cause, cause my friends would like go home, they, you know, every weekend and, uh, I would be, it would be like me a couple of the other fucking foreign exchange students and a few other kids and you know like we were all weird introverts that didn't know so we would just not fucking hang out with each other <laughs> so we would just we would just all fucking stay in our rooms <laughs> like it was crazy so you know that was kind of the way that that it was so i kind of figured out how to make my own fun but i but at a certain point was like, I gotta fucking get this car on campus so that I can, like, do stuff, and, um, and one of the primary reasons was, uh, so, so basically so that I could have some independence, again, the independence factor was, like, a big thing, um, to go to my job and stuff, right, like, I, I had a part-time job, or I wanted to get a part-time job, um, and eventually I got a job at Starbucks, and then in order for me to keep that job, I needed to get my car. So my sophomore year, uh, you know, I, again, I had to kind of fight my dad on it. And I got my car on campus specifically so that I could drive to work um, and and back without, like, depending on public transportation, which there wasn't any public transportation um, in the place that I was. But that's sort of like my, my connection with this car right is this this route that I have with it is it was sort of always this representation of of real independence for me this piece of shit tan 1996 Ford Taurus with a tape deck fucking tape deck you got I that's how I listen to my music I had one of those tape deck things that you could plug into your CD player and stuff and then I would hook my CD player into this this little compartment in my car um, that, that it would just sit there and I, and I would have these and, and inside my, uh, center console, I just had, I had maybe like 25, 30 different CDs that I would cycle in and out. But I had this massive collection of CDs too. So like, that's how I fucking would listen to music in my car. Uh, and then eventually like I got, um, you know, I got, I got a, a, a music player that, you know, like an MP3 player and stuff. But this car, like this, that's what it, it represented, my independence. And, you know, um, we went through a lot of shit with this car. Uh, I, I, I bought a new, I bought a whole new fucking uh, stereo system for it, uh, like this music system for it that had an MP3 connector, uh, a multi-disc CD player. Um, it had uh, a place where I could plop, pop in my USB and connect a bunch of shit, like, it it had, it upgraded the car to to like a level that I don't think this car would have ever really seen, right? So I put that in. Uh, we put uh, we put new brakes and new like we you know like we we changed the whole braking system on the car. Uh, we we put a new alternator. Uh, we did a bunch of fucking work on this car. I think we probably did at least at least three to four thousand dollars worth of improvements on the vehicle uh in the time that we had it especially the time especially by the time i got it because i got it towards the end of its lifetime um you know like like the car had been a we the car had been in like our family uh for at that point 
you know, that I'm doing all these, all this work at least 10 or 11 years, something along those lines. Um, and, uh, yeah, I'm, I'm just, I'm, as I'm saying this, I'm realizing how fucking sentimental this car really fucking was. Uh, but goddamn it, was it a piece of shit. <laughs> I keep, I know I keep saying that, but it's, it's, that car, that car was, like, compared to all the other cars that I've had, it, like, that was, and I, and I and, you know, it's just like, a, that's your first car, right? Like, most people's first cars are, they're just, they're fucking terrible. They're hunks of garbage most of the time. <laughs> Unless you're, like, a rich kid, right? And, like, at that point, you're just, like, my first car was a fucking Mustang GTO with a nitrous oxide tank and it's at its own orchestra uh, and then sometimes I would hire uh, the band Sum 41 to play in the back of my car uh, because my dad told them that he would cancel all of their records if they did it. <laughs> sometimes that's what you have. Uh, but I didn't. <laughs> My car, my car was a, was kind of a piece of shit. So, so this is, I, I know, it's kind of a long background information on this car, but you have to understand like what this car actually meant. Uh, and and the place that we're part that we're that we're uh, we're passing right now, where I'm driving right now, um, is sort of where the story starts. So, um, one of the things you have to know about this car is uh, that. Oh man, I'm just remembering another thing uh, on. We had a beehive in the car too. Like these bees had um, <laughs> found their way to the inside, like right here. Uh, they got in between the the door panel and the door itself and built a hive. So every time we got into the car, we we're like, "What the fuck are these bees doing in this car?" <laughs> For like a week, we were just like, "Holy shit, there are just bees in this car! What the fuck is happening?" Right, but there, it's because there was a hive in there. So we had to like call a guy. He had to pop the panel off, and then, um, and then get, and then like get the bees out of there, because uh, there were just bees in the car. So, uh, the so the so the door panel, and this was on the passenger side, right? So the door panel on the passenger side was always just like a little weak. And um, my sophomore year of college. Um, no, this wasn't, this was my freshman year of college. Uh, yeah, on my freshman year of college, it was fall break, right? Uh, I remember it was fall break because it was kind of nice outside. And, uh, um, uh, I would go and pick up my friends from high school, right? I had some friends in high school, um, and, uh, um, I would go and pick them up and we would go to my buddy Bobby's house and we would, you know, eat a bunch of food because we were a bunch of teenagers and we would hang the fuck out. Uh, and that was like just like a thing that we did. And uh, so that's what I did. I went to the high school, uh, I picked them up and there was always like the running joke within my little friends group was who would get shotgun, right? That was always kind of like the running, like everybody would kind of fight for it and nobody really gave a shit. Uh, or at least I didn't think we really gave a shit. Like, I never really gave a shit. I always kind of did it because it was just, like, like a fucking goof around. Uh, like, it was just, like, a fun gag that we were pulling on each other and shit. Um, so, <laughs> so, uh, my buddy Barth ran to the car just screaming, Shotgun! 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 <laughs> and I saw him, and I was... And so he, like, jumps into the car... And I tell Barth, I'm like, hey, bro, don't yank on that door. And he yanks that door as hard as he could to shut it so that nobody else can claim shotgun. And as he yanks it as hard as he could, he pulls the whole fucking panel off to the point where the clasps that were holding it together also break. And I fucking lose it, <laughs> right? Like I got through so much hell to fucking get this car and I lose it. I fucking lose it. And I was like, get in the back of the fucking car, you stupid piece of shit. <laughs> like, I lost my mind on this kid, man. I seriously like yelled at him the entire way. Like the first person we drop off was Bobby. And Bobby was like, you should probably go home and take care of this thing. Um, and then, like, we'll reconvene later. 
and Barnes is sitting in the back of the car, and I'm just fucking losing it. At one point, uh, I like this is the, I, I'll never forget this quote because Bobby never let me forget this quote. Uh, is I I apparently got so pissed and I was ranting so hard at Bharat for breaking my door <laughs> that I said in order to punish him I was going to drown him in a bathtub and then set his body on fire that is so insane you guys that is so great like I don't think I've ever been angry about anything to that level where I've wanted to like murder somebody and then desecrate a corpse. Like that's that's a whole new level of like I I don't even think I've ever gotten to that level ever in my life, right? Like that's so intense. Uh so <laughs> So I did the only thing that I could because because if the door wasn't closed, the only way that we made it work, the way that we closed the door, <clears throat> and it was literally being hung by the speaker wires, uh, like the speaker wire wires were the only thing like holding it to the fucking panel, right? Like the inner inside panel was being held to the outside panel by, by the speaker connections. So we, so I had Bobby like hold the door, and then we had to coordinate how to close it. <laughs> and, <laughs> I don't even remember how Bobby got out of the car. He might have crawled out the fucking window because he used to do shit like that. Um, Man, I miss that kid. Uh, But, um... But I I got home and I basically... uh, I basically duct taped the panel back on... Like, back to the thing, right? So... For years, years, fucking years, my car on the my my passenger side panel was always just duct taped together. Fucking years, <laughs> all through college, <laughs> like all my friends made fun of me for it. It was just like the most get like everything about that car was like the most ghetto rig you could possibly ever fucking find. The, the fucking panel was duct taped. I, I had a tape deck thing that got so fucked up that I had to replace it with the state-of-the-art sound system. Um, and then even that was kind of ghetto rigged because I used, I, I, didn't, I couldn't plug in my iPod, so I had like a USB fucking thing. Uh, so it's just like that car was getting, like just held together with with just hope <laughs> that, like every every time I got into that car I was just like oh please don't fall apart <laughs> please don't die on me please <laughs> so you know eventually like I I let it go I, I kind of forgave Barth but for for a while he just never sat shotgun in my car <laughs> Like, he just never... <laughs> he was just so freaked out. I mean, I did threaten to murder and desecrate his body. So I feel like that's he's that's fair. Like, I feel like that there there was a fair fear. Uh, but, but, like, he did fuck up my car. <laughs> oh, man. So, you know, the car ran for a while. I had it all through college. Uh, you know, that car has seen a lot of drunken nights, um, where I was the DD. So many fucking drunk people were in that car. Um, my, uh, I I had my, like, first real, like, real relationship in that, with that car. Not with that car, but, like, when I was, um, in my first real relationship, like, that was the car that I would, like, go pick up my girlfriend and, like, we would go hang out and do stuff and, you know, all of that kind of stuff, right? Like, it, it, it just, like, that car held a lot of shit. And so, I graduated college and uh, struggled to find a job for a while. Um, you know, my friend passed away. We're, we kind of went through all this shit. And I finally found this, just this fucking part-time job. 
uh, just so I had something, some kind of an income. And, you know, I worked at a shoe store. I didn't really have a whole lot of money. And I was still, like, on my parents' car insurance. So, and that, that'll that be important in a minute. So, I'm driving home in bumper-to-bumper traffic, right? Like, it's, I mean, it's just, like, crazy fucking traffic. Uh, I'm driving home, and it was going to be date night. Uh, you know, I, I was getting off work around 5. My girlfriend at the time was also getting off work around that time. We both would be home, to, you know, get cleaned up. We'd see each other, and we'd have, like, date night together. And it was going to be great because I think it was, like, the a first date night in, like, two weeks or something that we were able to actually make work where we didn't see each other for a fraction of a moment. Um, and it was going to be great. And I'm driving home. And, uh, and, you know, I'm just kind of, like, listening to music in my car. Uh, and I come up to a stoplight. Uh, and I pick my phone up. And, you know, my girlfriend had texted me. And she was like, oh, cool, okay. And I read the text. I put it back and put my phone back. Uh, and then I get, get back on, get back in, into traffic. <clears throat> and, uh, and I come to a, you know, it's like bumper to bumper. So it's like stop and go. And all of a sudden just Wham! I get, I get fucking rear-ended. Like, hard. I was at a complete dead stop. And I just get slammed into. And I, and I didn't know what to do. Like, for a moment, I got shell-shocked. And I, I didn't really understand, you know, what the fuck had just happened. And I looked behind me. And I just saw this red fucking Sebring. <clears throat> I still remember that car it hit me and I like I was just like what the fuck and I pulled and I could hear like something scraping on the ground and I pulled into this parking lot um, of this warehouse and um, and the guy pulls in behind me and uh, and he gets out and he was just like oh man Oh man, this is so bad. I'm so sorry. Like I didn't even fucking, I didn't even see you. Uh, this is so crazy. I'm so sorry. I was talking to my boy, died of the ATL, and I was like, you could have just said you didn't see me, and then that would have been the end of the conversation. You didn't have to tell me about the ATL. You didn't have to tell me about your boy. You didn't have to tell me about any of that stuff. Uh, and I was like, all right, man, that's cool. Whatever. Are you okay? Like, uh, like, are you hurt? Do you need? Um, do you, you know, do you, do, you, do you need help? Like, are you, you know, and, and he was like, no, 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 I'm good, I'm good, I'm good, blah, blah, blah. And I was like, okay. Uh, and he's like, I got to call the insurance company. And I was like, yeah, I think we both need to call the insurance company because uh, you just rear-ended me, bro. And so we get on the, so I get into my car. I'm sitting in the driver's seat of my car. And, uh, and I make the phone call to my insurance company. And I see him. He, he makes the phone call to his insurance company as well. And we're sitting there. And, you know, he's sitting in his car. I'm sitting in my car. And I'm talking to the insurance company. And they're asking me all the all the details. And I was like, yeah, I just got rear-ended. And he was like, oh, so we actually don't... Um, like, you can file this claim. But really what it's going to be is uh, it, the other guy. Like, we get his insurance information... Um, so if you can collect his insurance information and we'll add it to the claim, um, you know, uh, we'll, and, and we'll take care of it from there. And I was like, okay, is that, is that all I really need to do? And then at that moment that I find out that I have to get his insurance company, old boy fucking comes and sits in the passenger side of my car and it's just kind of sitting there. And I was just like, oh, this is kind of crazy. And I literally turned around I stared at him and he stared at me for a second and then I (laughs) I look at my phone and I go hey I think I gotta call you back because I think the craziest thing just happened (laughs) and she's like what and I was like yeah the guy that hit me is just kind of sitting in my car and she was like okay well we're gonna file the claim and you kind of figure out what you have to do with that and I was like cool 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 so I hang up the phone and I turned to him and I was like hey man what's up (laughs) 
And he go, and he looks at me and he goes, yeah, bro. So I was actually on my way to pick up my son from daycare. It's right down the hill. If you get out of here and make a right, it's right down the hill. And, uh, and then you, you can help me pick up my son and take me back home so I can like, you know, be home with my son. And I just kind of stared at him for a minute and I was like, did you, did you forget how, uh, how your vehicle collided into my vehicle and for like a hot minute your vehicle and my vehicle became like one vehicle for just like a fraction of a second uh until they were violently ripped apart my muffler's on the ground (laughs) like it ripped the muffler off of (laughs) and he's like yeah would just help me out you know i could throw you a couple bucks for gas and i was like that's not the problem the problem is that I don't think I can drive my fucking car you sick you loony dude like what are you talking about and so he just kind of stares at me again for like a solid minute and I was like and he was like yeah can you take me and I was like no no I can't take you what are you talking about you ran in. you rear-ended me. I can't move my car anywhere. Like, I have to call a tow truck. I have to call my insurance back and request a fucking tow truck to get me back home. What are you talking about? So, now his car was pretty fucked up too, right? Like, the whole front of his car had collapsed in. So, he, his insurance company had already requested a tow truck, gotten all the information, and they were like, oh, we have to contact this dude's, this dude's in, in, insurance company, so you have to give him your insurance information so we can all connect. And, he, and then so he just looks at me and goes, uh, all right. And he, like, gets out of the car and starts walking away in the opposite direction that he needed to go to pick up his son, right? right? Like, he just fucking walks away. So I get on the phone back with the insurance company, and they're like, okay, we're going to request you a tow truck. It might take a little while, blah, blah, blah. And he's like, so what do you want to do? Do you want to take it to a garage or do you just want to take it home? And I was like, let's just take it home. Like, I just want to go home at this point. You know, so they're like, great. Okay, so we put in the address. They requested a tow truck. And and then and then the cops showed up. Because um, because when a tow truck is requested for an accident, I guess the cop has to show up. And it was like a different, like, they were they weren't in the right jurisdiction (laughs) so uh the the cop wasn't in the right jurisdiction to uh like the one side of the road was a borough and the other side of the road was the township and the township showed up and i was on the borough side so they're like we're gonna wait for the borough cops to show up uh to to like write a report or or whatever with this thing and i was like oh okay uh, that's fine, I guess. Uh, so he just kind of, I was like, I gotta go call the, you know, double check everything with the insurance company. Um, so the insurance company was like, okay, well, did you get this dude's information? And I was like, yeah, I got his insurance info. You know, I gave, I gave the insurance information. Uh, and then I'm sitting there and I look over and on, on the dashboard on my passenger side, fucking dude had left his driver's license on my dash. So the borough cops show up and, um, and, you know, they relieve the township cops or whatever. Uh, and like, they're talking to me and they tried to, you know, they're trying to like figure out what the, what the hell actually happened. And I was like, yeah, I don't, I don't really know what this dude's deal was. He seemed kind of all over the place. He asked me for a ride and they were like, wait, what did he do? And I was like, yeah, man, he asked me for a ride. He wanted me to, like, take his kid or whatever. And they were like, wait, did you? And I was like, fucking no, dude. Like, my muffler's on the ground. And they were like, oh, you know what you can do for that? You can just take, like, a hanger uh, and, like, wrap it around and, and, and it'll, like, lift up. And I was like, yeah, I don't No, I don't think I'm going to do that. But thank you for the advice. Like, I don't need to ghetto rig my car to that degree right now. I just want to fucking go home. 
And, and the cops were very nice, and they, like, stood there, and, and they were just like, do you know what this guy's name was? Do you know who he, like, what the deal was? And I was like, nah, man, I, I've never seen this dude before. You know, we talked for, like, a hot minute. He jumped into my car, and then he bounced. He went the opposite direction. And he was like, wait a minute, he fled the scene of the accident? And I was like, I don't know if he fled. I think he decided to not be here anymore. Uh, if that's called fleeing, then sure, that's what he fucking did, right? And then I was like, oh, wait a minute. And I walked back to my car and I pulled out my driver's license. And I was like, hey, do you think by chance his driver's license would help you guys? And they were like, yeah, kind of. What? And I was like, yeah, crazy story. Remember how I said he sat in my car and asked me for a ride? Most well, fucking driver's license was in my car. <laughs> so they were like, okay, cool. I, I, I guess that's fine. So, he, um, so the tow truck comes, and they basically figure out they can't tow my car, they have to flatbed it. Uh, that's the only way to get my car, um, out of there. So, I had to wait another, like, 45 minutes, uh, which was, actually, this part was kind of cool, because I did get to operate the levers of the flatbed. That was kind of rad. I thought that was pretty cool. I was like, I'm, I'm useful. I'm doing things. Look at me being a manly man, being all useful. Like, it was pretty... I'm not going to lie. It was kind of fun. Uh, I, I I enjoyed that that part of it. Uh, and, you know, I, I, I had to call my dad and shit. And he was just like, you fucked it up. What the fuck did you do? You ruined this car. And I was like, I didn't ask to be rear-ended, bro. Like, I wasn't... I wasn't like, boy, I hope somebody hits me from the back. Like, that's not... That reference wasn't made to be as uh, awkwardly sexual as I anticipated it to be. So, uh, sorry about that. <laughs> it just came out. I was just like, oh, it sounded weird. But, like, I got, you know, it's like my fucking car got slammed. I didn't ask for that. I wasn't, I wasn't fucking hoping for that shit. Uh, you know, so my dad gave me a bunch of shit. And fortunately, like, the insurance that we had, if we get into an accident like this, is no fault. I got a rental car for a couple days till I figured out like what I was gonna do, like how I was gonna get a new car or whatever, um, you know. So, uh, and I basically went from uh, just like the biggest fucking piece of shit to goddamn this dude in the truck just was not paying attention to when he just randomly merged into this lane. To like, I went from like the biggest piece of shit to a car that had like Bluetooth audio and serious radio and like voice commands and shit <laughs> you know like it had like heated seats I was like this is crazy <laughs> you guys are nuts to give me this car now the insurance company when they got when they um, came to do the check on the car or whatever appraise the vehicle they were basically just like we're astounded uh that this car is running who who told you to keep this car fucking running this is crazy uh it's crazy that you guys did this and uh uh, so they basically said we're gonna have to total the car and that was kind of a bummer and that decision was made uh when i was at work and you know so i um I actually didn't get to say, like, a real fucking goodbye to this car, which kind of sucked. Because I fucking, as much as, like, it was just a a piece of shit, right? Like, but it was, like, my piece of shit. You know, I had a lot of memories in that car. I I, I had a lot of, um, you know, emotional attachment to that piece of shit. Um, I got comfortable with it. and I felt, I felt really sad because I didn't get to really say goodbye uh, to this vehicle. We named it Sheila, by the way. I don't think I mentioned that. We named my car Sheila. Uh, and I think that's the only car that I have named. Everything else I don't think I've named. I've just never felt... Uh, I've never felt like I needed to name another car. Uh, I'll put it that way. Uh, which sounds kind of shitty. And I, and I definitely like don't mean it to be fucking 
shitty. Like, I it just have never... Like, I didn't name this car. This is just a Honda, you know. Um, but I didn't, I didn't get to say a real, like, goodbye to the car. Because they... They appraised it. They totaled it. They were like, we're going to send somebody to take it, to junk it. Um, and then that's it. And then they they came in and towed it, uh, which, which was sad. And I got home from work, and the only thing that was left was uh, a reflector, one of the, one of the reflectors. Um... And something else. What was the last thing that was left? Yeah, I think it was the it was just a reflector and like <laughs> and I think it might have been a piece of like the undercarriage or something. It's like something s- silly and I grabbed it from the ground and those were the last pieces of my very first car that I kept for years. I, I really did. I, I held on to those pieces for uh, just an extraordinary amount of time. And, uh, and I felt really shitty, you know, that I didn't really get to say goodbye for, for a while. So I, I kept that, I, I kept that around for a bit. Uh, and, uh, I don't have them anymore. I kind of had to, I, I had to, I, I think that I got rid of them, uh, cause I, cause I had to, uh, it just was, the, it's probably not the best thing to just keep around all the time. Um, so yeah, I, I, I wanted, I wanted to tell that story cause it, it popped up in my head on one of these drives that I was making and. You know, I, I I wanted to share that story. It's a little bit different. I've performed this this story on stage before. This is this is obviously a lot looser, has a bunch more uh, details and deviations and all that kind of stuff. I hope you guys enjoyed it. A um, little little bit different than some of the con- content that I'm I'm putting out uh, lately. A um, little reprieve from some of the more you know esoteric uh, kind of. Uh, edutainment situ- kind of things that I that I normally do, uh, but I hope you guys enjoyed it. Um, like I said, I'm aiming to put these videos out uh, every day at 6 p.m. Um, well, virtually every day. So the big change that I've made, if you haven't heard, I know I've mentioned this a couple times. Probably the the people that regularly watch these videos are like, "We fucking get it, Krish." Uh, but on Thursdays, I will not be putting out these videos. Um, I'm going to be focusing more on writing. And uh, Taboo Table Talk. Uh, so that's the dispatch and putting out the interviews. So I, I'm going to try to concentrate my efforts on that. So on Thursdays, I will not be doing uh, a video. So basically, uh, Friday, Saturday, uh, Friday, Fridays to Wednesdays, there will be a video. Uh, so we have Philosophy Fridays. We have Storytelling Saturdays. And then I go live every Sunday. Um, so if you have any sort of uh, question, like I'm, I might try to do a Q&A session at some point as well. Um, so if you have a topic in mind that you would like to discuss, uh, let me know. Send me a message. Send me an email, something along those lines. Um, I might do some follow-up stories uh, from from one of the segments. And then the other thing, too, is um, I'm going to be talking about some of these strikes that we've seen. And kind of going through the history of it because I think they're important and we don't get enough people talking about them. So I'm going to be picking one strike that that happened and kind of doing uh, just a historical look through of like, here's the thing that happened. Here's how we won. Here's things that went wrong. Um, Here's what we can take away from it. So I hope you guys are enjoying. I've done a couple of them. I did the 1919 Seattle general strike, the 1919 Winnipeg general strike, the 1934 San Francisco general strike. I have some rail yard strikes. I have some sports strikes. Um, I'll probably do a video about the the yellow vest movement that we saw last year that I have not talked about. I know a lot of people have talked about the yellow vest movement, but um, I, I haven't. And we'll see if I have anything fun and different to say. Maybe I don't. Maybe I do. Who the fuck knows? Uh, but I figure we should talk about it. We should still keep that in the forefront of our minds. Um, you know. Uh, and so I have some I have some uh, some topics of discussion that I'm I'm particularly excited about. But um, if you have ideas that you want me to discuss, uh, hit me up. I'm, I'm around. I'm available. Leave comments. Leave a comment if you would like to. I'm, uh, I, usually when these premiere, I'm in the chats. I'm, I'm commenting back to you guys. Um, I'm bad at initiating the comments. 
but I but I am good at responding to them. <laughs> uh, but I do see like when people pop into the videos and stuff. That's cool. It's hard to gauge like who is actually watching on the Facebook. It's even harder on on YouTube. I have no idea who's watching on YouTube unless you leave a comment on YouTube. Uh, so so yeah. Um, I, yeah, I hope you guys are enjoying it. Uh, I'm going to really try to uh, focus in on writing. It's been kind of difficult the last couple of days. I got laid out by a migraine on Thursday. Yesterday was uh, a little bit harder to also get in the into the writing spirit. I tried a little, and it just wasn't... I don't know. I, I, I felt like I was trying to force some stuff, so I kind of had to take a step back for a while. Um, so I'm, I'm really hoping that I can get into the writing spirit Um and, and work on some of these pieces. I think part of the thing is I need to work on not getting overwhelmed. Um, that has been an issue as of late. That's never been an issue for me in the past. Uh, I usually work on multiple projects uh, pretty consistently, but it, it, it has been a little bit difficult. And I think part of that has to do with setting my own schedule and um, being, being a lot more self-motivated. It's been a bit of a challenge. So uh, I'm working on that. I'm I'm getting better at it as the days go by and the weeks go by. Every so often, you kind of do need a break, though. Uh, but make sure that you're taking care of yourself out there. Make sure um, that you know you're checking in on each other. Um, I appreciate all the people that are checking in on me. <laughs> um, and uh, and yeah, I will be going live tomorrow at noon ish. Uh, pending technology <laughs> uh, and and what research and stuff I can do as quickly as I can do it um, and and that's it yeah I think that's 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 all I got uh, if you would like to you can donate ramen noodles comedy dot com slash donate uh, if you can't no big deal we're all we're all kind of in this shit together um, you know just be good to each other right now that's that's the big that's the big thing just be good to each other um, I appreciate all the people that have donated, that are patrons, that are sustaining members. Um, you guys are awesome. You guys are incredible. I love you guys. But uh, I'm gonna I'm gonna jam out to some music for a bit and drive around a little bit more, uh, and then and then uh, and then get get back to the old homestead. I'm I'm getting a new I'm getting a new uh, new cheap little desk today. That's the that's the agenda. I'm getting I'm getting a desk, you guys. Getting a desk. Getting a big boy desk. It's going to happen. Well, it's not a big boy desk. But anyway. All right. I'll, I'll see you guys tomorrow. Uh, be good to each other. And we'll see you on the road, folks. Bye.